Hello, my name is Scott, and in 1972, I installed a complete set of Stuart Warner gauges in my 1960 Ford panel truck. Well, it's 2021, and I'm restoring the panel truck. And in rebuilding the set of Stuart Warner gauges, I removed the water temperature sending gauge, which is a mechanical type gauge, and in doing so, I broke the capillary tube and it lost its charge of ether. This video will show you how to recharge that capillary tube and bulb with diethyl ether, restoring the gauge to its original condition. I have found the leak after putting uh, over 100 PSI on the system and hooking it up to this swage lock adapter on the cap tube. If you take a little bit of this snoop, which is sold by Swage Lock, and watch this. Put a little bit of snoop right here. And look at that. And you can see the bubbles form right there. What I did was I, I removed some of this material right in here, the plastic against the capillary tube, and then drilled this out in here, and it allowed this part to sort of come loose. And what you can see down here, if you look closely, is, is the bond between the cap tube and that little bulb right in there. So what I'm going to do is clean that up, and then attempt to resolder that and then go ahead and JB weld up this top connection to make sure that I have a good firm connection up in here. I'm now evacuating that little bulb with this vacuum pump in order to backfill it with the ethyl acetate. It's up there. Okay, I've evacuated my little bulb down here and I have it clamped off with a, a fitting on top of my plug valve and that fitting was washed with um, alcohol. You can use isopropyl alcohol. I happen to have some uh, antiseptic alcohol but either one will allow you to clean this particular fitting. So what I'm going to do is open up my uh, diethyl ether in here. to be um, lower than what um, we see at one atmosphere. And I'm going to put in one and a half milliliters of this. A little bit's going down the edge. Okay, there's about one mil. And, uh oh, I have a problem with this. Okay, there's about one mil. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off to the side. There we go. Okay, and about one and a half mils. Allow for a little spillage. There we go. Okay, that's a little over one and a half milliliters right there. So I'm going to go ahead and call that good. I'm going to transfer that into this little fitting and then I'm going to open up the valve and allow it to get pulled in. So be careful. Go ahead and gently put this into the fitting. And I've rinsed everything out with alcohol and let it dry. Okay, here we go. There we go. And I went a little bit over on my volume to allow for that. Okay. And I think I may just pour a tiny bit more in just to be sure. So another half mil 
just for good measure. There we go. Half a mil just for good measure. Put my cap off on here. Nice thing about this process is if I don't do it correctly, I can do it again. And so with a vacuum in it, as I open up this valve, it's going to pull the liquid right into the bulb. And if you don't have a vacuum pump, you can always just drop the temperature of the bulb by putting it in an ice bath and let it pull the diethyl ether into the bulb by lowering the temperature. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this and see what we have. Let me get my flashlight here. Oh, here it is. I can see that right now, I can see the, the diethyl ether in there. Let me open it up and I'll watch it go down. And there it goes. It went right in. Very good. Went right in there. Of course, I can see a little bit of dirt in there now as well. So apparently, you probably don't even need a vacuum in there to put your diethyl ether in there. But what's key is, is that you have um, you have a, a lower temperature there. So you're pulling your your uh, diethyl ether into the bulb. And here's my gauge. It's upside down, but you get the idea. And there it goes. There you go. Just about to boil, and it's approaching 200F. And that's what we wanted to see. All right, good enough. Success. Well, here are the tools of the trade. The job is done. You can see I've got my little 16th inch swage lock in here, turning these nuts one and about a 16th of a turn in past contact. This good whitey valve here. I've got my diethyl ether here and my little graduated cylinder here. My snoop, calipers, of course soldering and welding. Equipment is always important, but Hopefully with this charged up now, I've got my original temperature gauge here and I'll be able to put it back on my truck and it'll match all of the other instruments. Hopefully you can see that's an older style gauge. There it is. But uh, anyway, let's see if it works before I completely pot all of this in JB Weld. You can see how far I was able to withdraw that cap tube out of there. But I'm getting pot the exposed capillary tube with JB Weld to make sure that you've got a strong connection.